Welcome to Scumbags of the Internet. Oh wait, no. It's just a regular dose. It should be an edition of Scumbags of the Internet, but the only reason it's not is because there's just not enough definitive evidence. Here's what happened. A little girl, three-year-old Victoria Wilcher, gets attacked by three pit bulls while at her granddad's home. This part's true. I don't know who has three pit bulls, must have been one of Michael Vick's old buddies, but anyway, they rip the girl apart. She's now blind in one eye, facial scars, she's three, and she's already got a tough life ahead of her. But, she's alive. The family figures that the little girl hasn't suffered enough and that they haven't been negligent enough yet, leaving her alone to be mauled by dogs, so they decide after one of her visits to the hospital to take her to Kentucky Fried Chicken. If this was a Facebook post, it would read, What happens next will shock you! Apparently, Victoria and her grandmother were approached by an employee who says that the appearance of the child is disturbing to all the customers who are already having a hard enough time keeping their meal down since again, they're at KFC. And they asked them to leave. Outraged, the family takes to a Facebook group set up to inform people about little Victoria's injuries to reveal this heinous story, this disgusting behavior on behalf of KFC. Hasn't she gone through enough? Must thoughtless corporations and their yes-men make Victoria a victim again? Oh, and by the way, donations are welcome at GoFundMe. This goes viral, and of course, the donations start pouring in, with over $130,000 raised to help with the little girl's medical bills. Plastic surgeons are offering to do the surgeries for free, and KFC themselves pledged $30,000 and a full investigation into their restaurants. Here's the problem. The investigation turned up no wrongdoing. Of course they did, Buckley. They're gonna cover their ass. They're a corporation. Sure, that's a theory, but after their own investigation failed to find anything, they hired an outside investigator, someone who wasn't part of the Yum Brands organization, to find out what was going on. What'd they find out? That this incident likely never fucking happened. First off, they originally claimed it happened at a location that didn't even exist and hasn't existed for some time. They quickly changed their story, saying that it happened somewhere else. That doesn't seem sketchy, right? But hey, we all make mistakes like leaving a child alone in a room full of pit bulls or forgetting what street a restaurant was on, so we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. So, according to the local newspaper, the Laurel Leader Call out of Laurel, Mississippi, they checked the security cameras at the new location they claimed it happened in, and just in case they still fucked up, another location near the hospital. No one who looked like Victoria, who, you couldn't fucking miss, let's be honest here, or the grandmother appeared on any of the videos on the day that they claim this happened. Well, security cameras aren't the be-all end-all, right? So, they checked that day's sales. All of this shit is recorded. If you bought six Big Macs and a Diet Coke at McDonald's, that's saved somewhere. Grandma bought the child a sweet tea, whatever the fuck that is, I'm Canadian, we have iced tea, and some mashed potatoes. Again, in neither restaurant does this order show up, either by itself or in a larger order. No one that day, not one fucking person, purchased an order that included both a sweet tea and mashed potatoes. So, now what? Well, the Victoria's Victories Facebook page has been removed. A similar page still exists, but it's not the same kid, it's for something else. Although now they're apparently getting shit on by people who think it's the same family, but before they deleted the page, they said, I promise it's not a hoax. I never thought any of this would blow up the way it has. And please do not believe untrue media. Also, GoFundMe.com has suspended the donation page and is allowing people to request refunds. I don't know if that's normal, and they do say that the rest of the money is going to the family unless law enforcement tells them otherwise, but I'm sure it's not every day that GoFundMe outright stops people from making donations. But as of writing this, there is no definite answer. The family still claims it happened. KFC says it didn't. Every news article I've read mentions that the family and their lawyer are unavailable for statements. No one has stated that they're suing. If a KFC employee did this, they made a poor judgment call and, oh no, they'll be fired from their minimum wage job. 
If the family is lying, they're fucking pieces of shit and someone should go to jail for fraud. I'll do a follow-up if we ever hear anything more, but I'm gonna bet that we won't. KFC said they're giving 30k to the family regardless, and for once they got the public on their side. They're not gonna turn around and sue the family for slander and fuck that up. And 30k isn't a fucking lot of money for KFC. A confident lawyer could take them for a whole lot more. But I'm guessing the family is gonna shut the fuck up now and take what they got. We'll never know the truth because everyone involved just wants this to go away quickly. And if I'm wrong, May the colonel himself rise from the dead to deep fry my balls and season them with 11 herbs and spices. It'd still be more edible than the double down.